Hello everyone, I'm Jugger Wright and this is season two of my Minecraft Bedrock Survival Let's Play series. Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day. Welcome to episode 50 of our Let's Play series of the Minecraft Bedrock Survival. And, uh, you know, it's our 50 subscriber special at the time of recording this. We actually have 52 subscribers. And I want to give a big shout out to each and every one of you. And each and every one of you that watch these videos. And remember, if you're not subscribed, do so. Ring the bell so you can get the notifications and you don't miss out on future episodes. I thought, you know, what would be... What would what what would be fun to do for you know our fifty subscriber special? And I thought, well, you know, we had lost our gear. We need to upgrade back to netherite. Blowing stuff up's always fun. So we'll do some uh, sixty four bed explosions in the nether, and then uh, we're gonna do a nice little fireworks show to top it all off out at our fireworks station, which I have improved, and I got quite a bit of fireworks out there. Uh, we're going to have several dispensers going off at once instead of just the, the one like before. Give a little bit more variety and make the show a little bit more fancy. So uh, let's go ahead and venture through here. I want to show you guys some stuff. Um, this is what I've been working on and it's become increasingly dangerous. Um, I want to, I've been thinking, you know, just mine it out. Um, at least away from the walls the main walls whoa yeah these slimes are crazy I mean they don't do a whole lot of damage but they knock you all over the place uh, it'd be a good idea to have a shield getting lots of magma cream um, so I'm thinking get it away from the walls uh, the edges here a little bit so the beds don't hit that and uh, doing a whole lot of explosions here all the way down as well uh, to clear this out um, so this is this like like I said when we started this over here you know it's a big project and it's gonna take a lot of time but you know we'll have a lot of fun doing it and when we're ready to blow stuff up we have the perfect location hopefully we'll have plenty of ancient debris at least to upgrade our gear after this episode but remember we still want a set of backup fully enchanted backup netherite armor and tools at our starter base in case anything ever happens and we respawn there. And we also want a backup set of uh, tools and armor outside the, uh, inside our stronghold base. So if anything happens in the end and we respawn there, we're all good to go. And I've got the outline of this all done. I missed a few spots here in the ceiling. I'm trying to keep the ceiling level so there's no uh, issues with any of that with gaps in the bedrock and stuff. But... Uh, it goes all the way around a nice little nice little uh, diamond shape here I guess you could say and uh, that's pretty much all there is here so let's uh, I got some shulker boxes prep ready to go let's take our 64 beds and uh, have a little time lapse of blowing up uh, some stuff and see how much ancient debris we actually end up with so here at the uh, base I've been smelting up a lot of nether rack, getting the nether bricks block, uh, nether bricks, and turning them into nether brick blocks. We'll get some red nether bricks also, but uh, it's just a way to get some blocks that we can use out of all the nether rack that we're going to acquire, and we're going to end up with a lot more after today. But I just wanted to kind of bring you guys in the loop on what's going on here. Uh, we are getting a lot of materials from this stuff. And you're, you know, I mean, that's kind of most of the point is to get the resources and things like that. And I got most of my gear mended up and everything from the Blaze Farm just before I um, started recording. So this little bit of damage is just from, you know, over there with the uh, magma cubes and whatnot. But uh, I think now is a good time to get into that... Uh, little time lapse with uh, some explosions and stuff and let's have some fun and celebrate.
All right, everyone. So we've made it out here to the outer end where I've made some improvements to our firework display, and I really hope you enjoy the show. Um, we have a couple more dispensers up top there, and now we have this handy-dandy lever here. So let's get the show on the road. And this is for all 52 of my subscribers and just my way to show you guys how much I appreciate you. And for all of my viewers, uh, anyone taking the time to watch these videos, it really does mean a lot. Especially when you uh, give the videos a thumbs up, it really helps the channel. And also, I enjoy reading your comments and, you know, uh, participation in the comment section is always nice. And I get a lot of interesting feedback from you guys and I'd like to keep that going and maybe even, maybe even indulge in a little bit more. So I really uh, there, there's a there's quite a few fireworks in there. Um, I, I uh, really like the way this looks out here in the end with the black sky and everything. I think it looks really really nice, and I'm really happy with uh, the way this is turning out. And again, it's just a, a big thank you to everyone who watches my videos. And there we go, the end of the show. All right, everyone, upon editing my video, I realized that a lot of my uh, footage had gotten destroyed. So um, we just had random clips that we used for the time lapse for the bed explosions, for the ancient debris. And so I wanted to come down here to our little starter area. And I thought, uh, you know, we could slide in a little world tour to help kind of make up for that and look at all the things that we've created. And this is the little area where we spawned in at down here. And we got this little egg farm where we tend to get uh, a lot of foxes caught in and they end up going to the fox sanctuary uh, when that happens. So now that I know that um, he's there, uh, we'll move him over at another time. But this was our little starter cabin and our dock, which was built at another time. But uh, we, we have to try. Uh, can we get a trident? Yes, we can. Well, that was totally worth it. <laughs> so this is our little starter cabin, and we had a lot of storage in here at one point, but uh, we've since moved out. And this was basically just somewhere for us to come, lay in bed, and pass the night away while we were working in the mines, gathering resources and materials and stuff, you know. Uh, kind of like a starter house, but it wasn't our real starter house, I guess you could say. And this is our fishing rod that we would use to fish between episodes to get... Well, it turned out to be a lot of Nautilus shells and a few books we could use, but, uh, well, can we get another fishing pole? We don't really need one, but, uh, you know, let's just try our luck. And no. <laughs> but uh, it was worth a shot, right? So no pole. And, yeah, so this is where we uh, keep the hay or the wheat now to feed the cows and breed them up. But uh, it used to be where we would go over the stuff that we caught while we were fishing. And then down in there is our mine. We'll come back to that in a bit. But uh, let's go ahead and go up the mountain. We created this little path coming up here so that uh, when we moved from down there, we wanted our starter base up here. And so this was our actual starter house. And I'm really happy with how it turned out at the time uh it was exactly what i wanted but coming back and looking at it you know all this time later uh like 10 months later or whatever there's some several things i would have done differently just kind of give you guys a view all the way around uh there's a lot of uh, several things i would have done differently to make it a little bit different but uh we can go inside and take a look we got our two treasure maps there we got our um dragon egg and our dragon head and our chests where we would keep stuff that uh i would show you guys from our mining trips and stuff and then we had an armor stand there that despawned with the entity thing and we lost our backup gear the first time uh from that so that's why we keep it in a chest now and we had a tv that fell victim to the entity uh despawning stuff so yeah, you know, that is what it is, but we got our nice little kitchen right there. And then we go upstairs, if I can get up there. And we had a little bit of a, a storage room here, not a whole lot of stuff left. I've been moving it out and into the storage uh, 
into the regular storage building as you know we sort that stuff out but uh this is our backup armor chest where we still have a hoe in here it's fully enchanted just needs another right ingot we have one left that we can put on there we got 44 um, ancient debris from the 64 bed explosions in the nether just so you know and this is our bedroom and then so we back can go outside upstairs. the base um, we'll come over here first this is the uh, fox sanctuary where we had caught two wild foxes and we had bred them and had a baby fox that we no longer have but we've since rescued one fox and we know there's another one down there just waiting for us um, everything except the bees fell victim to the entity thing, including our villagers. Um, so we had to start fresh with everything, uh, except the bees. Unfortunately, we even lost our dog and the honeycomb, uh, collection system is here. I need to get more shears in there. Uh, I think we probably actually need to switch over to bottles. I think we're ready to collect honey. I think we've got plenty of honeycomb. And then our dripstone farm. I don't think there's anything in here. I try to check on these different things and get everything moved into the storage room whenever I am in this area. Um, so, And then this is, as you know, the dripstone farm is a slower farm to begin with. A little bit of a bamboo thing going there. But down here we have our MPS. The Minecraft Postal Services. Can't keep a door on this thing for some reason. And um, yeah. So okay. The candles are lit. And this is where you know we do the comments and stuff like that. From you know ones that I think uh, really need to be you know addressed and stuff. And when we come over this way. We come up to our storage building, which is a design I've used in um, one of my personal worlds before I started, you know, doing the YouTube stuff. And I really like the design and the the copper and the deep slate really go good together. I think that makes it look really well. We got a lot of stuff in here and it, we're still filling it up with things. We got... Uh, our pumpkin farm, automatic pumpkin farm here, which this thing, it's a beast. Uh, our fields that I come out here when I need to, to get more resources to trade with the farmer villagers, which we don't have again at the moment. But uh, we, we'll get them back as well as the few librarians that we're missing. And out here, this was actually the first windmill I've ever built. And... Seem to have trouble keeping a door on this thing too. I don't understand why the. It's got to be like the zombies breaking them down. But if there's nobody in here, I don't understand why they would be worried about breaking them down. There's nothing uh, to cause them to want to be in here. There's you know there's no player for them to get at unless they just randomly go to doors. Uh, and that's something that I'm not um, necessarily understanding. But yeah, we got plenty of room for storage and. I mean, there's, yeah, pumpkin seeds. There's uh, more room where we could actually expand this thing up if we needed to a little bit. Uh, I don't know that we'll ever need to, but if we do, hey, we got the room. And so now I'm going to turn it over to Day real quick, and we'll pass right by our nether wart farm here, and we'll get on with the tour. And here we can uh, take a look at some of the other farms we have over here. Uh, our cactus farm, which is amazing. We'll take a better look at that in a second. But our vine farm, you have to manually shear them. And I haven't been sharing them. Uh, we have moss blocks that you can use to make, uh, you know, mossy stuff now. So the vine farm's a little more obsolete. And then, yeah, the cactus farm really pumps out the cactuses too. Uh, we have a spot for them over in the storage room. There's our map wall. Uh, which we never did fill out, and we still will, though. I mean, we're not going anywhere. Uh, this was our drip leaf farm. Uh, you put it in there and just flip the lever, grow it, and break it down. And this was our... Um... Oh, somebody built this out of wood with all that lava there. <laughs> um yeah, I have to come back and do like a different design here with uh, without the wood. Like it went a long time without burning and I didn't think it was going to be an issue, but apparently it was. So anyways, that was our glow lichen farm right there. Uh, 
we could just sit right there and farm a ton of glow liking and we probably already have more than we'll ever need but uh, if we ever do need more um, I'll have this all put back in so that uh, we can do that and then of course the cauldrons here with the dripstone so we have our lava farm yeah there's no glow liking in there uh, so we have our lava farm all set up and we also have up over here if we take a quick peek our powdered snow farm which is only three cauldrons at the moment uh, we haven't really been doing anything with that to need more but there's our Christmas tree with our gifts and stuff right back there which you can see is pretty much across from the uh, skeleton farm that we're gonna go take a look at and straight ahead of us now is our coarse tree forest <laughs> We can go down this way and get a little bit closer look at these things. But first, let's go in here. This was our automatic sheep farm. I've uh, put the sheep back in here once already, but they keep despawning in the minecart hopper. Minecarts keep despawning. And as you can see, I mean, we have plenty of wool, so I haven't... Um, I'm, not, I'm not convinced that the entity thing is taken care of, so I haven't messed with it. All right, here we have our glow squid farm, which I don't think goes down to level 30 which is what it needs to be now i i've come and checked on this a couple times and i haven't seen anything we were getting stuff uh i thought we had uh, adjusted it but i could be wrong or something else in the mechanics may have changed um again our course uh tree forest right here and i know i'm kind of rushing through this stuff but i'm trying to keep the video from getting too extremely uh long and we'll come back over this way. Uh, we do have paths that I'm not using. And we have our little hand uh, cocoa bean farm there where we manually chop those down. We haven't needed a huge quantity, so we haven't done anything automated with any of that yet. Or semi-automated, I guess. And then over here we have our village breeder, which it looks like we're missing one of our villagers again. So that's uh, that's a thing. So does that mean that we are missing all of our villagers? What about this is where the babies come when they get dropped off and this should be loaded up and it was full of villagers. Uh, we do have a bunch of villager homes which we got most of our villagers back. There's some farmer villagers that um, should have homes that we don't have back yet. We had one for each type of crop. And luckily we were able to get a golden carrot trade in that so we didn't have any extras. But uh, we'll see how that goes. And then, um, you know, we have individual villager homes. That's a farmer house also. And I think this is the only one here that didn't have a villager uh, that was a librarian. And then we have our mending villager over here. And I don't have them labeled, but, uh, yeah, so we have individual homes, we have duplexes, we have, like, um, here's our little uh, villager conversion center with the med tent. Um, yeah, we have an uh, apartment complex over here, and right here uh, is a nice little area. Uh, oh, here's our geode. We can just kind of drop down here. Yeah, let's uh, eat this little hun this hunger thing where they fixed it is a big issue. But uh, yeah, I made it where we could easily mine these out. We're going to change the stone out with uh, warped blocks soon, especially when we need more of the amethyst shards and stuff like that. But uh, I grabbed the magma block and brought it because we were going to do a bubble vader down. But I figured the drop was just as good, if not better. So that's kind of where we went with that. And this is one of them projects that, uh, you know, I need to come back and change it out. And We haven't really been in this area other than for our uh, monorail and me redoing the villagers. And there's been so much work having to redo stuff that, uh, you know, I haven't gotten to that. And I have have repopulated sheep. I have them ready to go. They aren't despawning, but uh, I'm, I don't know. I, I just, until we need the wool, I don't see the point in going through the trouble of refilling the wool farm and getting it all set up with all the hopper mine carts and all that stuff. But over here we have our cemetery where all of our 
despawned villagers ended up and I guess we need to add one more gravestone in here soon for the villager from our village breeder who will be missed um, and we'll have to replace for sure but uh, we have enough villagers here to be able to do that without too much of a problem and then over this way we have our skeleton farm which is probably um, it was after the spider farm cave spider farm this was my most used farm um, for mending stuff up because it was quick and convenient got a ton of bone mill ton of backup bows um, ton of arrows we were gonna extend the storage out that way uh, we haven't done that yet uh, really haven't needed to and then if we if, oh my goodness if we come down here uh, we had a lot of uh, skeleton paintings on the wall that fell victim to the entity bug but uh, you know we were gonna add a enchantment area down in here possibly but I really like the way you can just stand here watch them go and then they come up the bubble vader and you can watch them the whole way uh, they do tend to back up here I'm not sure what I had going on down there but they'll back up for a minute and then suddenly one will come through and knock them all in um, it hasn't really been an issue because of the spawning rate but uh, yeah it's, uh, it's a really good farm you can't punch them but they're definitely a one hit with a sword so this is our monorail that we've been working on uh, it's or that we started <laughs> we haven't actually worked on it since we started it but uh, we will be getting this knocked out soon uh, basically it's gonna be how we get villagers or resources or whatever from our starter base to our stronghold base or whatever and I this was actually a uh, I really like the lighting here and uh, in rods were actually a recommendation by rocket bug uh, 5977 and I really like the way they complement that. So we added those in. And I think that's pretty much it for this area. So let's go ahead and head to the nether hub. Because that's where we're going to continue on. So this was the nether hub from our starter base. It's real simple. It's, it's real snug in here. Um, which we kind of did on purpose. Just because it was like uh, to give like the beginning vibe and everything kind of grows and progresses as we go on in this world uh, down here is where we go to get the ancient debris and we got plenty of openings but we have one tunnel um, that'll take us to our stronghold base down that way but this way is going to take us to the blaze farm and it's quite a trip so I will meet you there so now that we've made it here let's go ahead and take a look inside here is the nether fortress we really don't have anything going on in there um, at, at least not at the moment the only thing we have going on is down here and this is the uh, blaze farm you can stand right here and you can actually watch the uh, blazes spawn in I had taken the blaze rods over for fuel for all the nether rack we were smelting down but uh, I really like this design with the red uh, nether brick and the warp blocks uh, really 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 like it and like I said you can watch the blo uh, the blaze spawn in and they just kinda get funneled down with pistons and you can just kinda take them out here this has been my main source of XP for mending up tools and things like that uh, it works really really great and again the blaze rods give us fuel for our um, brewing stands and also it gives us uh, fuel for our furnaces so that's what we've been using for pretty much all of our fuel needs and stuff and I'm gonna go ahead and just mend up these few little things that we have here and we'll uh, continue on back to uh, the stronghold uh, portal room actually I almost forgot and there's a couple foxes there we haven't gone down into our mine there's some things down here that uh, we want to take a look at and we've got our very first pickaxe of the world right there the wooden pickaxe that gets you started and if you come down the stairway just about halfway you come to this door here and this will lead you right on over straight across from 
where we did our Halloween special thing, and there's like a uh, there's like a tunnel and some dead ends and things like that, and you work your way back around. If you hit a scarecrow, you know you went the wrong way. And this was our first XP farm down here, our um, poisonous spider farm, which doesn't really work anymore because of the lighting mechanics. I had an AFK door here where I could just kind of. Getting there in Bedrock Edition, we don't have the entity cramming and all that, so I could just let this thing build up while I went and grabbed a drink or whatever. But we could change all this regular glass out with tinted glass, and they start spawning back in. We've got all the string we could ever need, probably, um, right here already. So I don't know if we'll ever really need to fix that up or not, but we used to have a chest there for our um, emerald, our, our lapis, and our our books and stuff. But this was our first enchantment station. It got us a nice little clock on the wall so we could know if we needed to sleep before we went up or not. And yeah, this was, uh, I really liked the way that uh, turned out. Like I said, it was a pretty good uh, little XP farm, uh, especially to start with. And it was a real lucky find. And we come back to the staircase and finish working our way down. And this was the original level where you would mine for diamonds and stuff like that before the update with the deeper worlds and stuff. So you we have a tunnel going down right here to the bedrock level there. And then here we have, um, right this way we have our zombie slash drown farm right here and I, I have trouble with doors today um i really like the way this turned out also so the zombie spawner is up over that way and the zombies get flushed down and you could always turn them into drown just by having them submerged in water so you leave uh you know you have an on off switch for that and then all their drops come down here. I pretty much cleaned most of this out. And I try to keep it cleaned out. I haven't really used it in a while. Uh, the last time I used it was to get a couple zombie villagers. To repopulate the village here. And it looks like I may. just I may just use a couple of villagers. To get another baby for the. Uh, for the. Uh, village breeder. But uh, this is here. And it's pretty. It's still operational. And when we come across this way, we'll go, um, that's the staircase back up. And across from there to the right, you come to these torches. We haven't done like a proper entrance here, but this will lead straight down to the collection area for our mob farm. And it does really well. I mean, every time I'm in this area, I come and empty this chest out and take it to the storage building and it fills up pretty good i mean we get a nice flow of gunpowder out of this thing for being a general mob farm it suits our needs so this is the nether hub for our stronghold base it leads back to our starter area and we have some other odd and end exits to go through so straight across from our starter area is where we got this going on and we already took a look at that, so we can go through the portal to the Stronghold Base. So here at the Stronghold Base, we still have a lot of different things to do. Um, the portal brings us right here to the portal room for the end, and we'll go out that way in just a moment. But underneath here, we had like a little hideaway where we had some extra gear and a bed and stuff like that. While we were working on designing uh, everything before we actually had moved over here, and we could still use that for some extra storage if need be for different things. And then we have our kitchen area here. And it's constantly going. Um, over this way, we have right here our uh, second dragon egg that I have no idea how that happened. But we put it on display. And then we added our smithing table back here. And then back over this way, straight down the hall from the door is our storage room which is pretty huge and we have probably as long as we've been here we use probably half these chests for different things um, a lot of it could be condensed down and I've been working on that uh, I'd say probably a third of the chests are unused completely um, still so there's a lot of storage room there and then when we come back this way, we can go through this door 
and we have our little uh you know music area here where we had our parrots that fell victim to the despawn bug and we you know play our jukebox and they would dance and stuff and we got our new dog who by the way still needs a name if you have a name suggestion in the comments below uh that'd be awesome and our closet here which also had an armor stand with some backup gear on it that uh despawn or uh, fell victim to the in entity bug as well uh, as you notice we've, we've lost a lot to that unfortunately and up the staircase here um actually we have our two maps that we are working on there and then we have our enchantment area here uh this has uh been where we've been doing a lot of our stuff for our new armor and then we have our sugarcane farm our automatic sugarcane farm which is constantly running while we're here so that's nice and then all the way we have we passed a lot of dead space to get here but i mean it just goes to show how much stuff we still have left to do in this stronghold base we have our semi-automatic potion set up here um it will be fully automatic by the time we get done with it and we honestly just haven't needed more potions to worry about it at the moment there's just been you know more interesting projects to work on that uh we, we need to do to get things going but we have potions of strength too we have potions of regeneration we have fire resistance uh i believe that was splash potions of weakness and yeah we, um nothing in that chest what about the bottom chest uh potions of healing too and a potion of water breathing so i mean that's uh our brewing our brewing room and this will all this whole room we got some extra stuff here but this whole room will look completely different when it's done so back here at the kitchen you can go down the staircase opposite of the bedroom and when you come down here again this is still empty we can definitely do some stuff to decorate that up we're trying to give some of these rooms some kind of function but obviously some of them are going to be just for decoration and as we work our way back up here, this entire village we've walled in together. And it should be completely spawn-proof. Here's where we do our, uh, grow our trees. But uh, we've got our lamp post all over, the, uh, all over the place following the paths. And then we have some hidden lighting scattered throughout. Uh, Jack-o'-lanterns under the moss carpet kind of thing. Or, you know, just different things like that. But, uh... Yeah, we have several entrances to the village where the paths led to, and we just kind of left them uh, there and threw up some doors so we could work out different ways for different projects and such. So we'll go down to the opposite end down here, and we have a little bit of a little bit of a farm with cows and stuff like that. But let's roll it over to daytime and we'll. Head on down the path to the gold farm, what we have done with it so far. So right as you come out that door, uh, we had this first bridge we did that was just a simple incline. And we tried to give it a little bit of detail and support, but we didn't want to get too fancy with it. And then, of course, our cobblestone path. And this is all supposed to be horse friendly and should, if we were on foot, shouldn't have to do any jumping and we have our tunnel here which is still a dirt and stone ceiling because it's got these uh little support things helping hold it up and then i mean the path itself is just cobblestone and it runs along pretty good little ways uh we still have a little ways to go but uh this does go quite a ways already and we're almost to our second bridge here it is and we did a uh, pretty much a video on this right here and it's, it's a really nice looking bridge i'm really happy with how each of these turned out for what we were going for in that uh situation and i mean they can always be altered or whatever if we decide to do something else in the areas working off of them but it, again you know we put in some structural supports to really give it uh you know that realistic feel if we could and then we continued on our path through here and right into uh, this village or along the edge of this village here 
which that path actually runs straight up to our road, which is convenient. And we got this little bridge in recently, and a little bit of a jog up here, and then we had another bridge as well. And this was a little bit more work as far as uh, it pretty much was supposed to be like a pretty much a straight incline or decline down on this end. So it's a, it's not as uniformed as the rest of them were on the two ends, but you know that's kind of how it worked out. And then our path we're coming up on another village, so we're for the first time actually curving our path to the right some and trying to uh you know get that squared away but uh if we keep it curving to the right we can get around the village that you can see right now that we're coming up on and we got to get through this forest here which is where we are now and what we've been working on let's go ahead and grab our elytra and some rockets and we'll fly out to the village with the gold farm because when you know it, the gold farm just happened to be close to a village. And we can definitely secure those villagers over there. And I believe there should still be villagers in this village over here. I try to sleep. Um, the last village we passed uh, only had one villager and we tried to uh, recruit him and that went miserably. But uh, there should be villagers in this far end village. There was last time we were there. And... This one here should be populated as well. Again, I try to sleep, and it's all, everything I'm doing in the area is above ground. So, hopefully they're fine, unless a zombie got in with armor or something like that. But, uh, this will give you a good little idea of how much farther we have to go. There's our gold farm right here. Um, so, it, we actually have a tutorial on how this works. Now we're out here at the end. And this is where we spawn in at. And you can see our Enderman farm from here. This is where the last great tragedy happened. <laughs> where we ended up in the void for the first time. And um, I really like the way the nether brick blend in with the background. And it all just kind of comes to life as you get closer. Uh, it's the red nether brick uh, around here and then at the top the top platform is the regular nether brick and this is a uh, Set up to where I can remove this chest and actually put a couple more shulker boxes there when we have Several spare shulker boxes and then when a shulker box gets full uh, We just pick it up and move it to you know the next uh, Take it up and put it in a replacement so we're going to go ahead and grab a bunch of these ender pearls so that we can uh, replace some of the ones or add some to the chest and things like that down here at the other end. So we have our two end gates and the one that goes to our super lush area um, has a chest here and you know we're just going to finish filling it up with ender pearls. So we always have some here to get in and we'll come through. Whoa. And I extended this out to make it safer, but look at that lush, super lush area with our gazebo. I am really happy with how this has turned out so far. And we have a lot more work to do here. The, this whole island is going to be transformed. This is just the uh, uh, main attraction, so to speak. And we'll just throw the rest of these pearls in here. Maybe keep uh, some on us to get back with. But... Um, yeah, we got our aquarium over here, which our fish don't really swim in. And as you notice, this path here um, cuts through the wildlife. Uh, they just kind of hang out down here in these spots where apparently the Enderman can grab the sand through the glass blocks somehow. Um, so that's strange, but uh, that is what it is. But yeah, we got this nice little clear path so you're not bumping into stuff trying to walk through and everything. Just enter pearl over this way. And that's pretty much all that we have right now. And then, of course, over here, we have our second end gate, <clears throat> which we opened up when we respawned the dragon, which we want to get all the end gates opened up. That's the goal. Um, 
And so we probably ought to get back on that soon. Go get some gas tears and respawn the dragon and have us a good little battle. Maybe to open up an episode or something. But this is our where we have our firework display. And that's that's it. That's everything we have in our world. Um, I know this is by far my longest video. And I hope I haven't bored you guys too much. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, again, with the explosions not being recorded as much as they should have been and that getting turned into a time lapse i just i thought that this would you know a little world tour might make it a little longer but it might be exciting for you guys as well to see how far we've progressed in this world and again thank you to all 52 of my subscribers and to everybody watching these videos and that you know participate in the comments and give the thumbs up and everything i appreciate each and every one of you and if you enjoyed today's video be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and if you're not subscribed go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss out on future episodes and i will see each and every one of you in the next video